Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is October 29th, and right now we're looking at the infrared satellite imagery. So we got the Pacific Northwest kind of to the right center of this image. You can see this is the frontal system that went through last night, brought some blustery conditions across the region and a nice frontal system. But what we're looking at next here is this atmospheric river. You can actually see the jet stream out here way to the left of this image. If you watch that moving south of the Aleutian Islands, that's going to be moving its way all the way across the Pacific Ocean, pointing into the Pacific Northwest, strong jet stream atmospheric river will likely hit much of the region as we go on in through halloween and then we'll take a look at what is to come after that looks like we're going to remain active through the extended forecast so taking a look at what happened yesterday i'm going to put that on pause and we actually look at a couple of lightning strikes showed up across the olympic peninsula right there we scroll on in through last night and it looks like we had a few more lightning strikes there as well with this frontal system that came through last night this is about 8 16 p.m and then you can see that continue to move through the area is swept east of the mountains as well brought some moderate precipitation with that also and then we go out to where we are this morning you can see that frontal system continue to push off but we are going to start drying out here for today and tomorrow thursday actually not a bad day but then we have that atmospheric river looming and pointing back at the pacific northwest and just a reminder uh, uh, much appreciation for everybody who's been with this channel since the beginning and whenever you signed up i mean i i see you guys out there i see that you guys have signed up i see how long you've been a member for here so just you guys are the, the channel sponsors again much appreciation for you guys this channel is not possible without you so again taking a look at that jet stream at about thirty thousand feet or 300 millibars this is that atmospheric river out here or at least is the jet stream that will be powering that atmospheric river. And you can see the Aleutian Islands here, Pacific Northwest, off to the right of the screen. There's that storm system and the frontal system that moved through last night. So we get this bit of a transient ridge, and we're actually going to turn the flow offshore as we go on in through the day on Thursday. But you can clearly see that powerful jet stream pointed across the Gulf of Alaska into western BC. We'll start to move down into western Washington and Oregon as well as we go on in through this upcoming weekend. Then we have to watch for additional storm development here with some of this as we go on in through the following week and on through the extended forecast so if we take a look at that again there's last night's system transient ridge offshore flow on the day thursday we're going to dry things out it'll allow you to clean up the yard i mean it looks like somebody took a weed whacker to some of the trees in my neighborhood and some of the parks out here across the region i saw that tree damage a lot of power outages we even had a fatality and some injury in that last storm and then we get this trough really ramping up here across the gulf of alaska with that deep low strong jet stream potent atmospheric river back into the pacific northwest going to bring some nice precipitation totals for much of the region and then you can kind of see how this trough continues to hang out as we go on in through the early portion of next week so we'll have to watch for additional storm development after that. I'll show you some of that here more in a moment. Now, a wide look at things here. This is precipitable water, and this is the system that moved through last night. And again, we're watching this area way out here uh, across the northern Pacific Ocean. You can clearly see it racing across the Pacific Ocean as you go through the day on Thursday, and it starts to strike the region here as we go on and through the day Friday. Look at that atmospheric river extended all the way back north of the Hawaiian Islands. You can see it's got some kind of tropical tap or subtropical tap all the way back there across the west. Western Pacific Ocean. You can nickname that atmospheric river, whatever you like. Now, taking a look here at the European model. So there's that system. This is where we are right about now or so, right about there. And then you can kind of see the shower activity ramp wrapping up as we go through the day today. We start to kick things offshore. We got the higher pressure across the interior. Going to kick some offshore winds. I'll show you some of that more here in a moment. And then you see that atmospheric river start to bear down and hide a Gwai, Southeast Alaska, Western BC as we go through late Thursday night, early Friday morning. We go on into a Vancouver. Vancouver Island, Southwest BC. The European holds this off long enough for places like Seattle, Portland, and Spokane for the trick-or-treaters, but it does bring it uh, sooner here, and that would kind of bring a rainy solution here on Halloween for Bellingham, Southwest BC, Vancouver Island, some of the Northwest Washington coast. But we can take a look at some of the high-resolution models here in a moment as well. And then we scroll on into the future. You see that atmospheric river. Then we got this next system. You got to watch these because they don't look overly sinister or anything, but these can pack a punch. You know, the, the track of that low would be kind of favorable. And if this thing were to come in a little bit deeper, you always got to watch out for that. But right now, that doesn't look like a major storm or anything like that. But it would bring the next frontal system as we go on in through next week. 
Now, if we look at the North American model on the left versus the high resolution model on the right, we're getting close enough to this atmospheric river. We can kind of try to tease out the timing on this. So we go on in through the day Friday. You see that precipitation coming as we're about 5 a.m. on Friday morning. The HER and the North American model are in pretty good agreement on the timing of that. The HER stops at 48 hours, though, so we don't get any more help from that. But if you look on the left, you can see the North American model starts to bring some of that precipitation in the afternoon hours. And as you go through the evening hours, it may start to bring some of that rainfall across some of the Seattle metro just in time to make things wet for the trick-or-treaters. Same thing for Hoquiam, Shelton, starting to clip Olympia there also. And there's also a little bit of light rain, but that shouldn't really put too much of a damper on the trick-or-treaters out there. And it looks like Portland should stay mostly dry here, at least in the early stages of the trick-or-treating. Now, looking at 100-meter wind speeds, there's the storm last night moving through the area. Now, watch what happens as we come out in towards Thursday morning. See this wind right there? That is out of the east. Look at the gorge getting a bit breezy here as we go through tomorrow morning as well. So yeah, offshore flow, we get a chance to dry out for a little bit here, and then we bring the next atmospheric river. You can see it starts to get a bit breezy across from the northwest interior as we go through Halloween uh, night as well, and on the coastal areas up through the Strait of Georgia as this atmospheric river pushes down and across the region. Then again, we start to watch for maybe the next system as we go through next week out there. How strong would that low pressure be? Man, if that came in deeper, that's a nice track for a wind event here across the region. So you got to watch for stuff like that. Now, Seattle Tacoma has a high surf advisory out for some of the coastal areas. And if I click on that, you can see 8 to 22 feet, northern Washington coast zone, strong surf sinker waves can knock people off their feet. And, you know, the driftwood out there is extremely heavy. Keep your pets and children out of the surf zone. And if I go back to yesterday, this is yesterday afternoon, about 5 p.m., and you can see that strong storm up towards, you know, Haida Gwaii and western British Columbia. And you see the waves that it's throwing at the Washington coast as we go through this morning. That's why that high surf advisory is up some big waves rolling through here this morning that will be on the wane as we go through the day today and tomorrow we really relax the waves there but then the atmospheric river will help bring some bigger wave activity as we go on in through this weekend as well not quite as big as today but then who knows what's going to happen often through the extended forecast we're going to remain active so th this wave activity can change through the extended forecast so check back for that there is some dense fog advisories for some of the Lambert valley as well so heads up that if you run into some of those foggy conditions don't just stop but do slow down a little bit now taking a look here at the artificial intelligence ensemble mean so what i'm trying to show you here is the atmospheric river rolls over the area look at that by sunday what this is saturday afternoon actually 1.44 inches of rain for seattle lesser the further you go south more the further you go north look at that across some of western bc the north cascades and as we go on into the first week of november then continue on in towards november 10th and on in through the mid portion of november you can see quite a bit of precipitation as we have that tropping active storm systems trying to take aim at the pacific north West lost to watch here over the next couple of weeks. I mean, almost five inches for Seattle, pretty active period and huge amounts across the Olympics, Vancouver Island, Western British Columbia, and some of the coastal range as well, doing quite nice out of these systems. Now, if we take a look at that, we're looking at the extended forecast here. So there goes yesterday's system. There goes our atmospheric river swinging through. And then the artificial intelligence, not so bullish on bringing that system here on Monday, but it does bring a deep low out here across the Gulf of Alaska. Another potent frontal system at some point next week, like Tuesday night on in through Wednesday mornings we'll try to fine-tune some of those details then you really got to watch systems like this look at that thing is deepening as it approaches the coastline that would bring quite a windy period here to the pacific northwest so you got to watch these systems they're going to be moving and ebbing and flowing back and forth in these individual model runs but yeah we do have an active period coming up here as we go on in towards the mid portion of november look at that deep low kind of hanging out there continuing to throw systems and frontal systems in towards the pacific northwest and if you want a nice affordable home weather station no moving parts zero maintenance instant online data easy to set up does everything a weather station should you can still get this before we start to get the biggest and baddest storms here into the pacific northwest as we go on in towards the winter months so check that one out now six to ten day above normal signal there this doesn't mean too much at this time of year it's not like we can get heat waves here in the pacific northwest or anything like that but the precipitation here that makes sense with everything we just looked at as we go through november 7th and check out the patreon page too if you like i see all my members on there again much thanks to you thanks for supporting the channel hope you guys are having a good day we'll do this all again tomorrow and i'll talk to you guys then